So this is our second part of What Do Archaeologists Draw, wherein we'll be going over site plans, sections, single context recording, and sketches. We'll be going over some of this fairly rapidly. I just want to give you an idea of the many different things archaeologists draw and what they look like. So there's types of site planning that include top planning. So this records everything seen in the unit at an arbitrary level, respective of what the, irrespective of what the unit contains. Phase planning, which records all visible context considered contemporaneous. And single context planning, which records each context separately so that information for the context is grouped together and the relationships confirmed during post-excavation. There are some other variations now. Um, while artifacts and landscapes are generally fairly regular in how archaeologists around the world record them, site planning and context planning is where things rapidly, rapidly change. So I wanted to introduce you to these three fairly different forms right away. Um, so if you see a plan, say, from an American, um, you won't be too confused because Americans generally do top planning. So they record everything seen in the unit at an arbitrary level, whatever the unit contains. Whereas British archaeologists, archaeologists generally try to do single context planning. So here are some examples of site plans. Again, um, we have a classic from Stuart Piggott, and this I would consider a multi-context plan, and so that you are able to see pretty much everything that's going on at the same time. Um, you'll recognize some early conventions being formed um, in the hashir marks and some of the shading indicating cuts, but it is all uh, planned all together irrespective of phase. This is another multi-context plan, and so this is again from the Archaeology Data Service. I just pulled this one from a place called um, 3238 Butter Market in Ipswich. And here you can see how complex some of these more densely occupied sites can be in that it is recording all of the different cuts that you see at the site with the um, slopes indicated as well. And so a very dedicated archaeologist could go through and unpick this um, stratigraphically by just seeing the relationships of which pits overlay which this was probably all drawn separately as single context plans and then overlaying together. I also like to uh, include this much, much less um, cluttered sketch. This is from Matt Edgeworth's work, follow the cut, follow the rhythm, follow the material. Um, again, I'll put it in some of the optional readings for this week. And in this, he is showing how um, different lines are used within multi-context planning to show the relationships of context to each other. Now you can see the dot dash dot dash is an arbitrary edge and you see the hard edge of a real feature which is a cut with slopes there, but you can see um, different annotations in North Arrow, and this is very much a loose sketch, not necessarily considered to be um, measured or for the archive, and we'll be talking about sketches a little bit later on. Right, so sections. Again, sections are fairly regular in how they're depicted um, in some places. Uh, in Europe, in Israel, sometimes people use color coding or they use kind of special symbols um, within the section, but you generally do see the stratigraphy being portrayed as different layers above each other. And um, as attributed to Pitt Rivers, uh, Pickett says, describe your illustrations, do not illustrate your descriptions. So once again, they've very early um, archaeologists telling us how critical illustration is to depicting what you think about the site. And I think that's particularly um, funny as Pitt River's sections have been reinterpreted 
as showing that he didn't actually know quite what was going on. Um, he uses average sections, and so these are the average amounts of things that you find within um, arbitrary levels within um, his archaeological sites. And so it just looks like a scattershot of artifacts all kind of munched together and not what you would consider um, to be a stratigraphic interpretation. Probably the most iconic section drawing is Mormor Wheeler's section from Singuntium. Um, and this is um, a very authoritative section in which you can see um, the outline of the trench and the different layers within the trench. And this is, again, the first step towards a real codification of section drawings within archaeology. And Stuart Piggott, within this section that you read for, for today, says, it was a statement in a new code, a relational model representing the excavator's interpretation clearly and unhesitatingly. The sentence spoken with inflections of authority, the drawing of a man who had made up his mind. There is no quibble in Mortimer Wheeler's sections, <laughs> um, you are convinced by the forcefulness of his illustration that this is exactly what had gone on. Um, whereas perhaps some of the more recent illustrations uh, of sections, such as this one I just picked from Chattelhook and it's reproduced from a article by James Taylor here in the department, um, that uh, attempts to show interpretations of different layers and different levels within a site. Um, and this is very much a product of post-excavation um, in which they assign different um, layers and different phases to different parts of the section. But sections, as with most drawings, are a collective effort. And so many archeologists over the years worked um, at the face of this section, drawing things over the years. And so this in post-excavation was then taken and reinterpreted and condensed into uh, what the um, person, I think it was Shahina Farid, um, uh, interpreted about the site through her many years of working there. Right, so moving on to single context planning. Um, so single context planning is the British standard. It records each context separately. And so it records these abstract events or concepts in the archeological record, including negative cut features. And while this is accepted as very usual, very regular within um, British systems and in the, and, um, the university in which you are learning, um, this is not necessarily a standard across the world, sadly. Um, some archaeologists don't necessarily see or recognize cut features or record them adequately or see them as the, um, the critical strat stratigraphic record that they are. This is closely tied to the Harris matrix, and it's used extensively on complex urban sites, sometimes not necessarily as well used in very deflated or rural sites. Um, if some of you go on to work um, more locally out in rural areas, uh, sometimes single context planning doesn't make a lot of sense when you're digging along a very long um, evaluation trench and you have perhaps one feature in it. So I like to show this as another example of how photography and illustration can kind of work hand in hand to um, show a site. This is an excavation that I participated in in Qatar uh, called the Origins of Doha Project. And this is context uh, is cut 605. Um, and the it is primarily within the um, top part of the picture that you see here. And the bottom part has already been excavated down to what we call natural or the beach sand um, on, on which everything is overlain. And so this is a typical um, a drawing of this uh, such a cut. And um, it can be difficult to see because it's on gridded permatrace, which doesn't actually scan all that well. But you have many conventions within this drawing, including um, a layered cut feature, annotations, and um, the, the heights of all of the points within the drawing, a small matrix down at the bottom, and um, where this drawing is within perhaps other adjoining drawings. 
This is a digitization of the same drawing that is perhaps a little bit easier to see. And then finally, this is the digital drawing overlying the original um, photograph. And so it can be difficult to see how that photograph could necessarily relate to um, the drawing unless you completely overlay it or unless you're quite used to reading these sorts of plans. So I encourage you to go through the slides for this lecture and kind of go back and forth and see how the photographs and the illustrations are related to each other and try to understand how the conventions are created. Again, these are some of the drawing conventions drawn from the Museum of London Manual, 1994. And um, these are hopefully at least fairly regular across the sector, at least in the in south of England. So again, limit of excavation. There's an uncertain edge for when you're not quite sure what you're seeing and hard edges um, that generally do show real things or real features. I've taken the liberty, again, this is in Qatar, working um, with the QIAH project. Um, this was a very large open area excavation where it was actually really difficult to see um, the different layers in the sand. And the sand, um, the site was characterized by many sand drifts kind of overlapping and overlaying each other, sometimes with cultural features and sometimes not. But with this slide, I tried to show you where the uncertain edges were. So I wasn't sure where this context ended right over here. I was fairly certain it went around this way. Another small uncertain edge. And then the limit of excavation right here on the edge. So that's an arbitrary line with a cut feature here in the edge. Right, so finally we're going on to sketches and many site sketches are quite important. Um, again, we go back to the origins of Doha um, example in that this is the back of a context sheet done by Ben Sharp for the origins of Doha project. And again, it's a multi-context plan. And so it brings together, instead of just drawing one context, it brings together many different contexts to try to show the person who will be dealing with post or other archeologists what the archaeologist was seeing in this, and this, especially at a site like the Origins of Doha had, um, is critical because this is a photograph of the same site um, that is fairly difficult to see. Um, I can see it perhaps because I was digging there, but you can see a line of the wall here, you can see the break in here and some other features going on, but when you compare the two together, you have the site sketch that tells you this is a wall, wall 75, this is wall 76, there is a break in it here, there are several breaks in slope, and perhaps another wall that was here that has been robbed out but is no longer really all that visible. And so you see the photograph and the sketch work together so that you're better to able to interpret the site and you're better able to understand the site, especially as the archaeologists saw it themselves. This is an isometric sketch. This sadly is a dying art among archaeologists. But again, this was on the back of a context sheet and it really shows better than many other depictions of it. Um, the building, um, the standing elevation of this very small um, doorway that was in Qatar. It gives the matrix there on the side. And then you're able to more directly relate the different features within the trench to each other through using an isometric sketch. <laughs> 